Instancing collections is a very powerful tool in Blender. It allows you to create an exact duplicate of a collection. This may contain animation data, physics simulations, or other collections inside it. You can even have particle systems. Whatever you want, you can create an instance of it. First, let's talk about what an instance is. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's an instance of the object or collection that you want. Whatever changes you make to the original object will affect the instance as well, as you can see on screen. The cool thing about using this is that it won't use up any memory. Since it's a linked object, the only memory that is used is from the original mesh. You can see here if I duplicate the sphere, it will add to the total memory of the sphere. But if I use an instance of the sphere, the memory will remain the same. How this works is you first need to select an object or multiple objects that you want to instance. Press the M key and move them to their own collection. From there you can either right click the collection in the outliner or you can press shift A and go underneath the collection instance and then add the one that you want. If you have multiple collections in your scene, they will be listed right here. Once you create an instance, an empty object will appear. If you duplicate the empty, another instance of that collection will be created. This way you can have multiple copies of a linked object. Now that you know what a collection instance is, let's go ahead and create a design using these three objects. To actually add in a collection instance, we need to move these into separate collections. This one on the right side, I'm gonna press the M key and move it to a new collection, and I'll just call it circle. And then I will select the arrow, press the M key, move it to a new collection as well. We'll go with arrow. And then finally, the last object, I'm gonna press the M key and move it to a new collection and I'll call it window. So here we have three different collections. I'm gonna hit the minus key to close them all down. And to add in an instance, we're gonna press shift A and go underneath the collection instance and then add in the one that you want. I'm gonna be using the circle one first. So if I select the circle, what it will do is it will create an empty right here and it will also create an instance of that object. If we then rotate this empty, I'm gonna press the R key. I'm gonna hold control. I'll snap it to, let's go with, uh, 30 degrees. We can see here we have two objects. This one right here is the instant and this is the original mesh. What happens now if we select our original mesh and press G and move it around, the instant will also follow its exact movement. So a really cool way to create a circle around is if you select the instant, press shift D and before you press anything, hit the R key on your keyboard to rotate. I'll rotate it 30 degrees by holding control, left click, and then if I press shift R, that will duplicate the last action. So I'm gonna do this a couple times to bring it all into frame. And here we have a complete circle. If I select the original mesh, move it around, you can see it's creating this sort of an effect. So you can really easily, if you drag these in, we can create a really cool design as you can see here. And whatever animation data that you have on your object, the instances will also follow it. For example, if I press the N key and go underneath the item tab, if I select the rotation and add in a driver, you can do this by going hashtag frame, and then if you divide it by let's say 50, we'll press enter. Now there will be a little bit of rotation. So if I hit the spacebar to play it, we can see here we're creating this cool animation with the rotating uh, circles. Also, whatever change that you make to the original mesh will affect the other ones as well. So if we go into edit mode, and let's say we select the edges right here and just like extrude them outwards, it will affect all the other ones. If you want to delete all of the other objects, you can box select all of the empties right here and then press X and delete them and that will get rid of them all. You also might be wondering why we just don't use the array modifier to create the circle with the empty as the object offset. And the reason for that is because it will also add memory to your scene. If we select this object right here, we'll go over to the array modifier, add this in, and then we'll turn up the count by quite a bit. On the bottom right, it's adding to the total memory of the scene. But if we were to use a collection instance, I'm gonna press Shift A and just do the exact same thing. I will add in the arrow, and then I'll, I'll rotate it by 30 degrees again. Shift D, R, and rotate it one more time, and then we're gonna repeat that last action, so Shift R a bunch of times. You can see the memory has remained the same even though we've added in a bunch of objects. So that is why collection instancing is very uh, powerful. It will not add any memory to your scene.
Then of course we can select our object, move it around, and place it anywhere that we want, rotate it around just like that. And just like that, we can see we've created a really interesting design with just a few clicks using the instance collection. You can also combine all of these together. So if I select this top instant, scroll all the way down to the bottom, holding the shift key, I will select the window 11. I can press the M key and move them to their own collection, collection four. If we press shift A and then go underneath the collection instance and add in collection four, there is one problem though, and it's not going to include the original mesh as you can see here. So what you need to do is just select another set of instances. We can select all of these ones and then move them to the position of the original mess. So I'm going to press shift D right click and then R to rotate. I'll hold control to snap it to that location. And then all we have to do is instance the collection four. So if I press shift A, go underneath collection, collection four. Now we can see we have this exact design, but it is only one instance as you can see. So using this method, you can create some really interesting designs very quickly. One thing I forgot to mention is that wherever the cursor is in your scene, that is where the empty is going to appear for the instant. So you can see here, if I press shift A and add in a collection, and then I will go with arrow, we can see that the empty is right here, but the mesh is over here on the left side. We can see if I move it up, it moves it up out of the way. So if I place my cursor right about here, shift A, collection, and then I go with uh, arrow once again, it's going to position it over here according to this mesh. So one thing that you might wanna do is just position everything at the center. If I press Alt G, that will move it to the exact center. And then I can press Shift S and go cursor to world origin. So the cursor snaps right there, Shift A, and then add in the arrow. And now we can see the empty and the arrow is in the exact same position. Then we can select the original mesh, move it out of the way, select the empty and then rotate it like that. So that's something that you wanna keep in mind. The empty is always gonna be positioned right where the cursor is, and the mesh is going to be positioned according to the original mesh over here. One of the best things about instancing collection is the ability to animate the visibility. Normally with a regular collection, you can't animate the visibility. You can see here if I enable the camera icon in the filter menu, I can't animate it. So if I wanted to turn off all of the objects in this collection in the rendered view, I won't be able to do that. But once I add in an instance of that collection, now I can turn it off and on and I can animate it. Now let's say that you've created an instance, but you want to be able to edit it like a real object. You can do this by selecting your instance and pressing Ctrl or Command A, and then select Make Instance Real. Now you'll be able to edit it just like any other object. The object will still be linked though, so if you want to make it its own separate copy, what you need to do is go over to the Object Data button and click on the little 2 next to the name, and this will make it its own single user. Now you will be able to edit this mesh without affecting the original one. I knew about this feature, but only recently did I understand how useful it can be. The option to animate the visibility of a collection is very, very useful, and I use that all the time. Hopefully the Blender developers will add the ability just to animate the collection itself without having to instance it, but for now, this is what you're going to have to do. So there you go, that is an overview of instancing collections. Thank you very much for watching. If I forgot anything about instancing collections, make sure to leave a comment down below and I will pin that comment. Also, make sure you click that red button down below. If the red button is actually gray, don't touch it, you're good to go. You can just leave it as it is. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.